Hi folks, Dr. Robert Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Now, this video is going to be um, about uh, the use of zinc as a treatment for anxiety and depression. And this is gonna be the first in a series of videos that I'm gonna do looking at mineral monotherapy. Now, mineral monotherapy is really um, the use of single minerals to be able to cause um, uh, changes in, in indiv individuals' moods. Um, and there are a number of minerals that have been shown clinically to have this um, drug-like effect in humans when given um, not particularly high uh, doses um, to those people that are suffering from anxiety and depression. And the first mineral that I'd like to look at is zinc. Um, this goes back to um, some of the other videos that I've made where a lot of people who have uh, anxiety, for, for example, the generalized anxiety syndrome, or they have um, mild to moderate depression, they often overlook uh, the basics and they try and, uh, you know, they move straight to, um, you know, using amino acids or combinations of amino acids or other things. Um, when really uh, there are, there have been some very simple uh, treatments for anxiety and depression that have been shown to be highly effective. Um, now the reason that these minerals are effective and zinc is the first one I'm going to cover is not fully known. I will try and go through some, um, some mechanisms that may uh, explain their action. Um, but really, uh, it's not really fully understood how they work. And, and I, I will need to emphasize that they do appear to have um, drug-like effects. They do have very quick effects. And this is something that you maybe wouldn't expect from nutrients. Normally when you, uh, you, know, you have a mineral deficiency or you have a problem with um, you know, a, a vitamin deficiency and then you, you, you try and correct that deficiency, it usually takes a number of months, six months before you get your health back. In the case of these uh, minerals, the, the effects are very quick, and they, that, this is why I say they have a drug-like effect. I'm not trying to say that they, they work in the same way as drugs, but drugs tend to work very quickly because they target particular proteins, and, and these minerals seem to have this, uh, this very, uh, you know, very rapid, rapid response of the people that are supplemented with these minerals. So zinc is the first one that I want to cover, and zinc is very interesting. It's required for many enzymes in mammalian systems. There are over 300 enzymes that are known to, to, to require zinc as some kind of cofactor. And zinc is required for um, development and regulation of cells because it's also um, intricately linked to um, the, uh, the, 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 the DNA in the cells. They, they require zinc as well. Um, so cellular regulation and, and cellular differentiation and growth and development are all related to zinc. And zinc, um, it's not surprising therefore that Zinc deficiencies cause um, retardations in growth. They prevent. They cause retardations in development. Uh, they cause cells not to be able to divide and and and, and differentiate correctly. And so, zinc is very, uh, from a biochemical point of view, zinc is very important. It has a very wide range of uh, of roles. Um, zinc is also required for certain antioxidant enzymes. Uh, so therefore, uh, you know, there's another uh, another role that it plays. Uh, and there are many enzymes and metabolic pathways that require zinc as a cofactor. Uh, and if zinc is, is deficient in the diet, these metabolic pathways stop, stop working correctly. So zinc has a very wide ranging role, probably the most wide ranging of all of the minerals uh, in uh, you know, human nutrition. And one of those roles appears to be that it's required for correct mental health. Um, there have been a lot of animal studies that have looked at the, the role of, of, of zinc uh, in, um, in, in, in metabolic regulation of, of normal brain function. And from these animal experiments, a number of mechanisms have been described that explain how zinc may be able to um, alter brain function. Now, firstly, uh, zinc is known to be able to uh, lock on to the uh, a receptor in the brain called the glutamate NMDA receptor. Now, this receptor is activated normally by glutamate, and it's an excitatory um, a, a, a neurotransmitter releaser. It causes excitatory activity in the brain. Uh, and this is the role, one of the roles of glutamate in the brain. It's an excitatory neurotransmitter and it causes excitation in the brain. Zinc is able to lock onto this receptor and it inhibits this, this, this receptor. And therefore it inhibits this excitatory role of glutamate. And this has a calming effect in the brain. And this has been shown mainly through animal studies and also through cell culture studies. Um, and zinc is able to do this uh, very efficiently. Another interesting fact uh, about the glutamate receptor is that um, if you take uh, imipramine, which is an antidepressant drug, 
um, what you actually do is you increase the susceptibility of the glutamate receptor for zinc. So one of the ways that imipramine may actually have antidepressant effects is that it may actually increase the, um, the propensity of zinc to lock on to this uh, glutamate receptor. So uh, low levels of zinc, if you're taking imipramine, may actually be, uh, you know, may actually hinder the, 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 the ability of the drug to decrease your depression. So that's something else that's often not considered. Um, what else could zinc, uh, how else could zinc be affecting um, brain function? Well, zinc is very um, high in particular areas of the brain. The hippocampus and the, uh, and the cortex have very high amounts of zinc. Um, and what's found is that uh, a lot of treatments that are effective at preventing depression or preventing anxiety are actually able to increase zinc levels in these parts of the brains. So there have been experiments, for example, where rats were exposed to electro electroshock therapy. And what was found was that uh, this electroshock therapy was effective at uh, reducing their depressive activity, but also it was it was able to increase the zinc levels in those in, in the cortex and the uh, the hippocampus of the brain, which may explain how it was actually effective. Um, and you can see here why a lot of these experiments have been done on animals, because obviously it would be um, it would be unethical to do those types of experiments on humans. But you know this is important data. I don't I don't really encourage animal experiments, and not particularly keen on them. But you know I'm I'm looking at the data from a from an objective point of view, and and these experiments are, are very interesting. Um, you know, and if they can increase, you know, if this type of behavior, this this type of experiment does increase zinc levels in parts of the brain. Um, that can that you know that can be very important information that can be used to 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 understand its mechanisms. Um, so so zinc is also as I said it's a part of an antioxidant enzyme. Um, superoxide dismutase requires um, certain forms of the superoxide dismutase enzyme requires zinc, and therefore zinc may also have an antioxidant role. And I've talked about this before, but high antioxidant status is beneficial to mental health. Those people with high amounts of oxidative stress, those people who have low amounts of, of, of antioxidants, tend to be much more susceptible to uh, m mental deterioration and mood disorders. And this probably relates to the fact that the brain is full of polyunsaturated fats, those polyunsaturated fats are really susceptible to oxidative stress, um, and they they require high amounts of, uh, of, of you know of, of, of antioxidants to protect them. Um, another thing that's been noted about zinc is that increases brain levels of um, brain derived uh, neurotropic factor, which is a, a protein that's produced that actually protects neurons and allows neurons to regenerate. So there is actually um, evidence that zinc can actually cause the regeneration of and the protection of neurons in the brain, and therefore it may be a neuroprotective agent. So all these mechanisms go together to explain from animal experiments and cell culture experiments why zinc may actually have this uh, very rapid drug-like effect in the brain to decrease um, you know, mood disorders. And experimental evidence is also um, has also been collected from humans, and what has been found is that those those humans that have uh, depression and uh, anxiety tend to have lower levels of of zinc in their plasma, and not only that, they also tend to have higher levels of copper. Now, the reason this is um, significant is because zinc and copper are two minerals that antagonize each other. If you have high levels of copper, you tend to force down your levels of zinc. And if you take higher amounts of zinc, you tend to force down your levels of copper. So those people with high amounts of copper and low amounts of zinc uh, possibly have an imbalance in their diet, or they possibly have some other reason that is causing them to be um, hyper absorbers of copper uh, or hypo absorbers of, uh, of zinc. And this is causing an imbalance in their blood. And this may uh, uh, explain why they have uh, the anxiety or depression. And what's interesting is if you take people with depression, if you take people with mild depression, they tend to have mild deficiencies of zinc. If you take people with uh, moderate depression, they tend to have intermediate levels of, of zinc, uh, it, still borderline deficiencies. And if you take those people with severe depression, they tend to have very low levels of zinc. So there is a, a correlation between your zinc level and how much depression you actually experience. And the same thing has been done um, for anxiety as well. Those people who are more anxious tend to have lower blood levels of zinc. So this may be why zinc supplements are uh, very effective at causing um, mood elevations because they see they appear to be more effective in those people that have the more severe deficiencies. And there have been studies that have done have looked at people who have um, 
you know, have, have measured people's uh, plasma zinc levels and plasma copper levels. And I will put the uh, one of the papers that I've been looking at uh, in the comments box below this video. And there was one particular paper that measured people's uh, zinc levels and copper levels uh, in their blood. Uh, and it compared to, uh, the zinc levels to healthy controls. And it compared to healthy controls, those people that had high levels of mood disorders, those particularly anxiety, um, they had low levels of zinc and high levels of copper, which is supported by other papers that have also looked at this type of uh, parameter. But what was interesting is when that those subjects that were given uh, zinc supplements, along with other nutrients as well, in a, in a, in a kind of small uh, multi multivitamin, uh, their zinc levels increased, and those people who had the highest level, the the, the best response to the zinc, who had the, the you know a, a return to normal zinc levels, actually had elevations in their mood. Um, so this is the human data that, that's supported by all of the animal and cell culture studies that shows that when you actually give people with depression who have low levels of zinc in their blood, when you give them a zinc supplement, their, their blood zinc levels normalize and at the same time they experience elevations uh, in mood. So I will put that paper in the comments box below this video so that if you want to have a look at it you can. It's quite simple to read and I would suggest that you do have a look at it. Um, so what's the take home message from this video? Um, well, it, really that, you know, the Western diet is known to be um, low in zinc. Uh, certain countries are known to have low zinc soils. Uh, many, many studies have shown that people who live in, live in the West and, and, and live in developed countries and who eat the Western diet, uh, the vast majority of them do have low or poor zinc status. Um, and studies have quite clearly shown that zinc has this drug-like effect and if you supply these people who have low levels of zinc with zinc uh, their mood is elevated and they go back um, to being uh, you know mentally more more healthy so if you feel that you could fall into that category uh, you know and remember that even if you're eating a high quality diet there's no guarantee that you're getting high levels of zinc um, you could easily have your zinc levels tested uh, if you feel that you are suffering from you know uh, long-term depression mild to moderate depression or you know you maybe got this generalized anxiety um, syndrome you find that you can't get rid of it you've tried other things maybe herbs um, it, it might be worth actually looking at mineral monotherapy and I would recommend that you also look at uh, watch the other videos that I'm going to do in this series I'm also going to look at selenium I'm going to look at chromium I'm going to look at magnesium and possibly some other minerals that have been used uh, in isolation to be able to um, effectively treat, uh, rapidly treat uh, mood disorders like anxiety and depression. So I hope you found that interesting. As always, eat well, stay healthy and protect yourself and I will see you soon for another video. Take care. <laughs>